Let's just go through the top 10 reasons one more time from the top. We believe that there is a great gift in coming to church. Um, again, in person, virtually, we're just being together. Everybody say number 10. Number 10. Communal prayer. Communal prayer. Clap it up for communal prayer, everybody. There's a great gift in praying together. Everybody say number nine. Number nine. Inspirational music. Clap it up for some good music, y'all. And you know, we, we, we're debuting karaoke you know, worship because we think it's a cool way to get some of us just to sing out loud. How many know when you go to do karaoke in them little karaoke bars, we just lose ourselves? <laughs> How many lose yourself in a karaoke bar, right? I mean, closing your eyes and just all into it. And then you get here at church and you like, you know, scared to even rock. I bet you we had a Beyonce karaoke night. Some of y'all just be, just be out. You don't even know that when you pay them thousand dollars for them tickets, you had a karaoke concert. All right, I'm gonna stop messing with y'all. Number eight reason why we come to church: meet and reconnect. How many glad that you live in community with some people where you can know every week? Sometimes I want to go, where everybody. Knows my name. Wish I had a, wish I had the spirit of cheers up in here. And you always what? Mm -hmm. See, that's the now we dating ourselves. Some of y'all don't even know who we talking about. But I found out that Cheers is on Netflix and it's on CBS, so you can. Cheers, one of the greatest shows ever, ever done, and its theme music every week puts you in a spirit of just belonging. So even if you just watch it for the opening session. It'll remind you. All right, the seventh reason why we come to church is for family ministry. And we believe, again, that it is our job as a community to love all of our children, all of our teenagers, all of our young adults, all of our families, no matter how you are constructed, no matter how you are uh, pulled together, that God loves families however families are created. And so we affirm all of our families and all of our different modes and ways, and we want to be a blessing to all of our families. Number six, reason why we come to church, connect to justice and service opportunities. We don't believe the churches should just be about you coming just to only get your own spiritual life in place, but we think we are called to be a part of the church so we can be a blessing to other people. And the legacy of church, particularly in the African-American tradition, the black church tradition, is that we have always been a church that cares about justice, cares about correcting wrongs, getting inspired and collectively pulling our resources and our wisdom together. And so connecting to justice and service opportunity is a very important piece. Number five, reason why we should come to church inspirational messages. And we heard some today, right? We heard, amen, from Dr. Talani, Dr. Travis, Dr. Jason, Pastor Tanisha, just messages that inspire you to be a better you. Reminding yourself that we are always a people in progress, right? And we can always be learning, always be growing. Reason number four, charity. The scripture reminds us it's always a blessing to give and not always be in a place to receive. And so then, number three, I'm going to just spend about 10 minutes uh, reading this passage of Scripture because we do believe that preaching is a very important part of why we come to church, which would be reason number three. And so I'm going to invite us to go to Romans chapter number 14. And like Pastor Tanisha, I'm just going to read this Scripture. But I love this passage of Scripture. This is our lectionary passage. It is a passage that has been pulled out of and structured all over the world. The global church is literally preaching from the same group of passages and texts so we can have some form of unity and believe that God is speaking to us all across the world uh, with a collective message, even though that message can come and meet you right where you are in your life. 
I mean, that's a mighty God, right? The God can give everybody the same message, but that message knows how to take root in your heart wherever you are in your journey. That's the word and the power of the almighty God. And so Romans chapter number 14 is where we're going to read. I'm actually going to read the message translation. If you got that queued up, uh, because I love this past. Now, again, I want you to know back to church Sunday is always the third Sunday of September. And so we always are trying to figure out, God, what would you have us to say to your people? And I didn't even have to look far. I just looked at the lectionary passage. And this is what the scripture says to all of us who are coming into the house of God today on this great day of just reunification and reconnecting. The scripture says, welcome with open arms, fellow believers who don't see things the way you do. How many know a lot of people don't go to church because you just can't agree with folks on a lot of things? Oh, that's a judgmental place. Oh, it's full of hypocrites. Oh, they root for the wrong team. Oh, I don't like their hairstyle. Oh, they different color than me. Oh, I didn't. and we always find reasons not to be together. But this passage says that all of us, everybody say all of us, have a responsibility to welcome one another with open arms. That the ability to be a welcoming human being is not very common in today's United States of America. One could argue it's not very common in today's Bay Area. One could argue it's not very common in whatever block you live on. I'm not going to go in your house because I ain't trying to start no problems. But the key is we are called as God's people to be welcoming to one another, to live in a way, listen, the scripture says, where even we don't see things the way you do, we don't jump all over them every time they do or say something you don't agree with. Even when it seems that they are strong on opinions, but weak in the faith department. Remember, this is so good. Listen to this. Remember, they have their own history to deal with. So treat them gently. This is the vision of church that I believe we have to get ourselves much more acclimated to. How can we treat one another more gently? God is asking us as a church, we as a people, you as an individual to be committed to treating one another more gently. Now, if I had more time, I would keep reading all the way through verses 2 through 10. Read it at, at your own time. But the, the scripture goes along this laundry list of reasons back then why people were falling out with one another. Now, to us today, this kind of seems trivial. But back then, they had a real big issue around, like, you know, because a lot of them were, were uh, Hebrews or Jewish folks who, who, who subscribed to the kosher diet, right? And so they weren't allowed to eat certain foods. And they would fall out with each other over if you ate certain foods. Or they were falling out with each other over the days each other worshipped. Or the holidays or holy days that they kept. And for us today, you know, that kind of seems kind of trivial, right? Because very few of us fall out with each other over what we eat. I mean, I hang out with a lot of vegetarians. And, you know, I didn't know there was a difference between a vegetarian and a vegan. And then you can go even like deeper down the rabbit hole around a certain kind of vegan. I think there's the vegans who, well, I, I can't even remember, but it, it'd be like, you know, you know, some of you drink milk, some of you don't drink milk, some of you eat eggs, because I guess it comes from an animal, so you just don't want, you just want to eat grass or something, you know, just plant-based. You're a plant-based person, right? And, and it's been such a fascinating journey, because, you know, I be trying to, you know, be vegan. Amen. But things, things be getting in my way. Amen. The, the smell of the barbecue. Somebody say amen. Uh, the finger licking good, Lord's bird. Somebody say amen. But I, I'm a struggle. I'm going to get there, amen, in this life or the life to come. <laughs> but we all have our preferences. And I think the writer is trying to help us appreciate 
that the first way you learn to welcome people is to allow people their preferences. Make space for folks to have a preference that is different than yours. Now, I got to say, we are living in a world where a lot of people don't have room for other folks to have a different opinion, to have a different preference. As a matter of fact, some folks would even use their faith to try to make folk feel like they have to have a particular preference on every single issue. Issues of human sexuality, oh, you got to believe it the way I believe it. Issues on policies, you got to believe it the way I believe it. Issues on your, the economy, you got to believe it the way I believe it. Issues on gender, you got to believe it the way I believe it. And what I have found is that if we are only focusing on what we don't agree, then we are often crowding out the opportunities for us to be welcoming to one another. What I appreciate about God's call to us is that we must be willing to inhabit spaces and build community, even with people we may not agree with, and learn how can I be welcoming to you? How can I have a conversation with you long enough to find some places we do agree, and rather than when I see you, every time I see you, I'm for focusing on the things that we don't agree on. Anybody ever met someone who every time they see you, they, you just hate to see them coming. Like, oh, here we go. It's about to be an argument. <laughs> it could be family reunions. It could be your job. It, it could be, it, it's like, oh, my goodness. We about to argue about something trivial or something important. I'm one of these people that believe that there always is an opportunity for common ground. And as followers of Jesus, as people of faith, we must exercise the gift and the art of finding common ground. Why? Because I'm going to jump down to verse number 17. God's kingdom, this is uh, the Apostle Paul uh, kind of summing it all up because I'm sure Paul was on a bit of a time schedule just like we are today. So Paul just cut to the chase. This is what Paul says. God's kingdom isn't a matter of what you put in your stomach, for goodness sake. It's what God does with your life as God sets it right. It's about what God is doing in your life when God puts it together. It's about what God is doing in your life when God completes whatever God is doing with joy. I and we can welcome one another because we can all agree that God is working on me and God is working on you and the work that God is doing is always completed with joy that there's joy in God's work in your life that there's peace in God's work in your life and your task is not to be single minded but your task is to realize that God I am willing to build community with other people. Why? Because it's my responsibility to be open arms and welcome me. It's my responsibility to keep reminding myself that God, if you're working on me, and how many can be real that God is working on you? Look, just look around the room, right? Now, if you know God's working on you, and I don't mean no harm, I want you to take this the wrong way. But you know God's working on you because you are a piece of work. <laughs> Hello, somebody. I think I preached that sermon one time. Look at your name telling you ain't you a piece of work. Just look at it, tell you a piece of work. Tell them that's okay. Don't shake your head, though, when you tell them that. Just, <laughs> just tell them. You, the pastor told me to tell you a piece of work today. I just, don't be mad at me. I'm just trying to follow instructions. You know you're a piece of work. Extend that space to your brother, to your sister, to your sibling, to your loved one. You know that your faith isn't strong in every area. So why wouldn't you give space for your brother and your sister's faith that not, may not be strong in every area? Isn't it so interesting that we often love to focus on the thing we don't struggle with as the litmus test of if God is real in your life. Oh God, I'm so glad I don't do this, 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 this. 
Oh, God, I'm so glad I don't do this, 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 this. And then when your thing come up, you be like, oh, but God, you, you understand me, God. You know. Man, you got an understanding. We got an understanding. We, we work. But yet with your neighbor, your family member, your partner, your children, we can often close our arms to those God is inviting us to leave our arms open to. And there is a real issue of isolation and loneliness in the world today. You can be surrounded by people and still feel alone. You could be working in in an office vibrant with all kind of folk and still feel isolated. You could be living in a house with kids and a partner or a dog. Everybody got an emotional dog. (laughs) Because there's an issue with loneliness. I had a partner tell me, like, man, you need to get up on that emotional dog. <laughs> you know, the dog, this dog loved me no matter what. Whenever, wherever, whatever I'm going through, I ain't, I ain't got to say nothing. The dog just hop up in my lap. I said, ain't that something? I'm not going to do no dog, though. I'm, I found pets don't have a job. <laughs> and pets take more than, well, anyway. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'll let Pastor Nisha and all the other folks. Y'all, y'all can have the pets. But my ho- oh, child, sorry. My point <laughs> is isolation and loneliness is a real thing today. And I want us as Christ followers, wherever you are in the world, to figure out how to be welcoming to other people. You should not be the meanest person on your block. The meanest person on your job. The person nobody wants to cross. Oh, don't talk to them today. They came in today. They knocked over the water cooler. They, they punched a hole in a the cubicle. They threw a pin over it just like a grenade. <laughs> that should not be you. Hello, somebody. You ought to be someone who is praying and asking God, Lord, help me to be a welcoming human being. That when someone has a problem, they know I can go talk to them. They're not going to judge me. They're not going to put me in harm's way. Why? Because they know that God is working on them. They know that God is completing their life. Hear me on this, beloved. God is completing your life. However and whoever you are today, you are not a finished product. God has God's hands. Listen, the hands that created everything. Them hands is all in your life. Some of you, I I don't like, if I I was in a holiness church, I'd run around here after that point. (laughs) I mean, look at all the beautiful things. We live in a big area. The, 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 The mountains up. We had some folk in town yesterday from Memphis, Tennessee, and they were riding around with us, and they were marveling at the billows of cloud against the backdrop of the mountain and the sun setting into the clouds. And we just live around it every day. Some of us be mad about it. <laughs> but somebody from a whole other part of the country is in awe of the magnificence of God's hands in creation. Them same hands is all in your life. All in your relationships, all in your mind and your spirit and your vocation. Them same hands are creating a masterpiece that redefines what you just told the person earlier. You a piece of work. You ain't a piece of work with with, with a pejorative. You are a piece of work because God's hands is at work in our lives And the best part about God being at work in our lives is that at the end of the process, you're going to have some joy on the other side. You ought to give your neighbor a high five and tell him, I'm waiting for my joy. I'm waiting for God to surprise me with some joy. The joy unspeakable that is full of glory. The joy that gives me strength in the midnight hour. The joy that gives me boldness in the face of all obstacles. The joy that reminds me that God ain't through with me yet. 
I'm looking for some joy. And if you could just remind yourself every day, God, a joy is on the horizon. Peace is on the horizon. Power is on the horizon. Healing is on the horizon. Then no weapon that's formed against you will be able to prosper. Do I have a witness that could just say for a few moments that I'm so glad that trouble don't last our way. I'm so glad that God is working in my life. I'm so glad that God's got his hands all in my marriage, all in my children, all in my community, all on my job, all in my mind, all in my body. And if God's hands are around, then greater is he that is in me than he that can I preach just for a three, three more minutes? Uh, you ought to tell your neighbor, uh, I'm glad God got his hand on me. Uh, I'm glad that God will never leave me. Uh, I'm glad that God will never forsake me. Uh, I'm glad that God is giving me uh, another opportunity uh, to let his hands uh, work through me uh, so I can open my arms uh, and be a blessing to you. Uh, I'm here to bless you, brother. Uh, I'm here to bless you, sister. Uh, I'm here to lift up your hand. Uh, I'm here to encourage your heart. Uh, I'm here to strengthen your mind. Uh, because God, uh, his hands are on me. Uh, somebody shout hallelujah. And this is why we want to come back to church. Because we want to be reminded over and over again that we are here to welcome one another. We're not here to hate on you. <laughs> we ain't no hating church, ain't no hating people of God. If you're around a hating child of God, you just put some distance. <laughs> I'ma love you from a distance because God's still working on you. Hey man, you ain't got to call her no name. You run to somebody that ain't, you just, God's working on you, I can see it. It's plain for everybody to see. Work on them, Jesus. And you sing a song. Work them over. Please work them over. I know when you get through, they won't be the same. That's a song. We used to sing that song. <laughs> Some of our songs now got so many cuss words in it. Then you realize, man, God working on me too. But we must be people who need to be reminded that I am God's handiwork. You are God's masterpiece. Don't let anybody make you forget that you are God's handiwork. And if you're God's handiwork, then I got to welcome you because I am God's handiwork. And all of us together are God's masterpiece. Let's stand and together, let's take a few moments to just be reminded of our collective if you don't mind, grab the hand of someone next to you. Touch them on their shoulder if you're a little COVID conscious today or their elbow. But we just want to take a moment to just ask God, Lord, remind us today that we are welcoming one another into community into love, into affirmation and acceptance. And the person I'm touching today, God, you know, you know what you're working and completing and doing in their life. God, as I gently squeeze their hand, I squeeze power into their hands. I squeeze peace and hope and love and joy and power. They may need healing today. I squeeze healing into their hand. They may need salvation. They may need a touch from you. And this physical touch, this proximal touch is a representative of the touch you are doing to them right now. Break the yoke in their heart. Break the issues that are an impediment to them appreciating that you are at work.
and we'll say thank you Lord now lift your hands right where you're standing it's me oh Lord and I'm standing in the need of prayer it's not my mother it's not my father it's not my sister it's not my brother but it's me oh Lord and I need you God somebody say I need you Lord I need your power today I need your love today I need your spirit today I need you God to remind me that you welcome me and I am in turn welcoming others you want me to find common ground you want me to not Lord God allow our preferences to be a place of division you want me God to F as much as within me to live in peace with everyone so God may I embrace the journey of welcoming others with expectation that there are people who are ready to welcome me hallelujah wherever I am on my journey and we'll say thank you Lord we'll give your name the glory Lord and the praise in Jesus name we pray hug two or three people and tell them you're welcome today you are welcome you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome give the Lord a hand praise everybody